We breathe a sigh of relief as Region 2673 fires a massive X-class flare and launches a solar storm that barely clips Earth. And then all the space weather goes quiet. Those stories and more in the news this week. Solar activity comes to a screeching halt this week as region 2673 finally rotates out of Earth view and onto the sun's backside. During its two-week transit in Earth view, this region fired no less than 20 M-class flares and four X-class flares. It launched proton radiation storms and two huge geomagnetic storms that hit Earth and a third one that clipped us. Boy, it's time for a rest, don't you think? And for you emergency responders who've been dealing with Hurricane Irma and the aftermath of Harvey, you guys can finally breathe a sigh of relief. The amateur radio bands are opening back up. GPS is getting better again. All the satellite services are recovering. And it looks like things are going to be pretty smooth sailing for the next couple weeks. Switching to our m -flare threat meter, you can see back on the 3rd is when we started seeing that X-ray flux rise because of region 2673 forming in very unstable conditions. We started popping M-class flares shortly thereafter. By the 6th and the 7th, we were popping X-class flares. We popped so many M-class flares over that course of that week from about the 3rd to the 10th that I lost count, but there are over 20 of them. Even the noise floor for the X-ray flux stayed above the seafloor levels, so the ham bands were incredibly noisy. There were more radio blackouts than you guys could probably handle, and you were just wringing your hands when it came to trying to do emergency uh, relief efforts for these hurricanes. Luckily, after the 10th, you can see the solar flux after that X-class flare, the solar flux dives, and it just continues to drop and drop and drop. That's because region 2673 is now out of view. It's wreaking havoc on the backside now, and we can breathe a sigh of relief as everything goes shh. Switching to our solar radiation monitor, you can see we've actually had two radiation storms in the last week. The first one hit late on the 4th into the 5th, and that rose uh, things to levels to almost an S3 level. It took a little while for that to die down, and as soon as that died down, then we got hit, bam, with the second one on the 10th. That was associated with that second really big X-class flare. And then that, we're still dealing with that one. This particular radiation storm is a bit more energetic than the first one, and the levels are still beginning to die off. We still are at an S2 level, or coming down to an S1 level storm, and this does cause problems for you amateur radio operators and GPS operators, especially at high latitudes, but things should be getting better and better over the next few days, and we'll, we will come down to uh, normal levels probably by the end of the week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see before region 2673 became a real player, we had mild activity, mainly from some fast wind, but nothing that lasted all that long. As soon as region 2673 fired off a couple of those big storms at us, by the 7th we were starting to see the effects of those storms, and by the 8th, bam, we got hit by a G4 level storm. There were actually two of them, and the conditions ended up jumping up higher than predicted, but luckily they didn't last as long as predicted. So so we came down after about the 9th, we started coming back down into unsettled conditions reasonably quickly, which I'm sure helped when it came to the, uh, the emergency response for Irma and for Harvey. After that, we went to unsettled conditions until Region 2673 fired off yet another X-class flare. This time it fired a massive solar storm that was not really Earth-directed, but the shockwave of that solar storm was so wide that it actually clipped us. That bumped us up to mild storm conditions on the 13th, yet another storm. And since then, we've bumped up to moderate level conditions for a short while because of some fast wind that kind of followed this solar storm. But luckily, things are beginning to calm back down, and I think the worst is over. And the aurora from these recent solar storms has been spectacular. I've been getting photographs from aurora field reporters all over the world, and I can't possibly show you all the photographs. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for sharing your stunning views with me. So to begin, I'll show you the aurora australis. It's been seen in Dunedin, New Zealand, and in Hobart, Tasmania. We flip to the northern hemisphere. It's been seen in Russia and in Finland, in England, and even in Iceland. There are coronas in Iceland. Now we go over the pond to the Canada. It's been seen all over Canada, and these are just a couple shots. I've seen it in Ontario. 
We've seen it in New Brunswick, and it's been all over Alberta. Now, flipping down to the United States, it actually made it deep into the United States. I've got lots of shots to show. East coast of the of, of United States, we've seen it in Connecticut and Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine. Here's a shot from New York. It went all the way down to Virginia and even North Carolina on the East Coast. It went to Ohio and Iowa. We saw it and even down to Illinois. And I can't resist sharing this picture from Minnesota. Yeah, who of you ever see a tire swing with the Aurora? Remind you of the Heartland. And speaking of the Heartland, the Aurora was even seen in Kentucky and clear down to Arkansas. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still experiencing some fast wind that's followed these recent solar storms. So the Earth's magnetic shield is a bit rattled. We've just come out of moderate storm level conditions and NOAA is expecting continued minor storm conditions at high latitudes with about a 70% chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're also expecting minor storm conditions over the next day or so, but only about a 10% chance of a moderate level storm. This should continue and to kind of begin to drop down in through the weekend and hopefully by the beginning of next week we should all be back into the green. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, what a difference a day makes. Last week we were looking at solar flare risk all in the yellow and now it's fallen off the map and everything is in the green. And now solar flux is more along the lines we expect for solar minimum. So they're kind of in the yellow now. We're kind of dealing with a little bit of radio propagation issues just because the solar fluxes are dropping. Now as far as radiation storm outlook is concerned, particle flux will continue to drop. We should be getting back to normal conditions by the end of the weekend so you amateur radio operators and you GPS operators especially at high latitudes you're going to get a respite from the uh, interference from this uh, radiation storm here pretty soon. So the space weather this week is finally calming down such a huge difference from last week so you emergency responders for the hurricanes you no longer have to deal with the big flares and the radio blackouts on the day side those effects are going away on the night side you no longer have to deal with the effects from the big solar storm storms, those are finally going away, and even at the poles, the effects from the radiation storms are finally dying down, so we can just basically finally breathe a big sigh of relief. On top of that, we've had gorgeous aurora all the way down to places like Arkansas and Kentucky and even Germany. And so you aurora photographers who have gotten some unbelievably beautiful shots over the last week or so, you can finally take a break and recharge your batteries, because we all need it. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.